why the narcissist truly can't move on. Guys, take a quick second, like and subscribe, and then comment down below if you agree with this take or you don't. It's okay if you don't. Comment down below on why you don't. Go ahead and grab some copier tea. Good evening around the world. Thanks for sitting in to the Narcology Morning Show. Cheers, guys. Well, guys, when you yoke to a narcissist, the pendulum was swinging and it has stopped temporarily with you. When they came into your camp, they didn't just come with themselves. They came with their baggage and their baggage and old bones in the closet. They're still alive. They're still alive. And you don't know this. You think that their past is their past. Their past is like your past. They have moved on from their past. They don't move on. They just roll the dice on current fuel sources, but they know that that doesn't work out generally. And so they have to have warm bodies waiting for them. When you yoke to the narcissist, guys, you yoke to somebody who is just trying you out for size. And they're going to say what you want to hear. Yes, they're going to think that you're the cure. But let me tell you, just because they think you're the cure, and a lot of people get excited saying, I was the cure, I was their cure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when they deem you the cure, if let's say you yoke to the narcissist, you marry the narcissist, and you let them by themselves the next day, the day after your wedding, and you let them to their own devices, you hopped on a plane, you flew across country or wherever you fly to, if the opportunity presents itself, knowing that you're the cure, they will take that opportunity for cheap side supply and they're just going to throw this cheap side supply. They're going to ghost them and, but they're going to throw them into the tester Hoover pool, i.e. the warm body pool, the harem garage. And they're going to gather all sorts of power from this. Um, they're going to be sending tester Hoover's depending on what they think about this one night stand that they had behind the cures back. Just because you're the cure doesn't mean you cure them of their narcissism. You cure them of their lonely condition of uh, not feeling unconditional love for somebody because they think that they're just too stringent, that they're drill sergeants in relationships, and all of a sudden they lose their love for people. And I'm speaking from experience. I get all this terminology for what I experienced, because I heard I, I can love, I just can't love like you do. And I'm like, what's that? What's that look like? Unconditionally. And I'm going, oh, how cute. This is, this is two weeks before the wedding. She dropped this on me because I said, I don't feel like you're in love with me. I feel like you love me, but you're not in love with me because there's no, there was no staring deeply into my eyes. There was no sleeping in. It was it was always get up, get up, to-do list, to-do list, to-do list. And I'm going, hey, this isn't normal behavior. I don't feel like you are, I feel like something's over your heart. And so, you know, this is God warn, forewarning us saying she's not what, what she seems to be. And I called her on it. And she says, I just, I just don't love like you do unconditionally. Well, love is unconditional. Love lasts forever. Love is is all the things that the Bible says love is, they don't feel. I brought her a certain chemical to the brain, a cure chemical. The, the mirror on my forehead reflected back to her such relevance that she's going to put a ring around that. And this is a narcissist. They're hoping that this chemical that they're feeling to their brain is forever. Uh, this is that unconditional love that everyone else can feel. But they're still going to be a narcissist. They still need cheap supply. They're opportunists. Uh, they can marry the cure and they will cheat on the cure the next day, the same day. Because they're opportunists that they know they're not going to get caught, they're going to risk that because of their corrupt, absolute corrupt foundation that they have. All together is corrupt. Whether you're the cure or not. So... 
uh, go ahead and sit back down in your chair if you thought you were the cure, because I know you have your pom-poms going, I matter, I matter. I'm not a Mrs. B anymore. I was the cure. We were all duped. <laughs> sit down. We were all duped. Whether you're a Mrs. A or Mrs. B, they they showed us these glimpses of potential that kept Mrs. A in it because Mrs. A loves a project. Mrs. A loves hurting the hurt puppy, the stray dog, getting the stray dog into her car and nursing the stray dog back to health. This is a lot of Mrs. A's with narcissists and male narcissists, especially will take full advantage of this. And so they're, they're able to give Mrs. A that twinkle in the eye every once in a while for Mrs. A to go, oh, he has such a good heart underneath this, this tough exterior. I know he's a good person. Well, he knows what you're thinking, Mrs. A. And this is why Mrs. A stay in it for two or three years and Mrs. A's finally go, nope, I've seen enough. This guy is trying to do this. This guy is getting worse. This guy, there is no uh, glimpses anymore of potential. This guy is trying to push my buttons. This guy is getting fuel off of, of my reactions, my negative reactions. And this is a relationship with the narcissist. Everyone starts out the cure with the narcissist, but it's not going to stop them guys from being a narcissist. And once you're in a relationship with them, they think they own you for life. They're going nowhere because of the curse that's on their life. So when it doesn't work out with Tom, Dick, Harry, or Sally, they revert back to the warm bodies. And this is why they want to leave in such a detrimental way of going, uh, excuse me, we just got married. Your hands are like this. Well, they know they can come back to that. And you'll be waiting for them going, what did I do wrong? It's a Stockholm syndrome. What did I do wrong? I didn't know you were serious this time. I didn't know you were going to leave this, this marriage. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's start again. This will go on for a lifetime. In, in aging narcissists, uh, it'll stop for the aging narcissist because they can't use their looks like they could in the past. So they have to get wiser. This is really where Mrs. B will lose her life. When, when she is a lockdown lifer with a narcissist, she is browbeat for the rest of her life. She is completely robbed of her virtues. And this is what a narcissist thinks about all their fuel sources. When they age, they go back. Who, who, can, I, who can I send a tester Hoover? Oh, yeah, yeah, Betty liked uh, Skittles. I uh, just saw your candy. It just reminded uh, me of you, Betty. And Betty's still going, oh, my gosh. I, I'm craving Skittles. Well, I can come by. I can drop a buck on your Skittles. I don't like doing things for people. But I'll do things because I think you are going to be, unfortunately, unfortunately, my life for Mrs. B, Betty. So I guess I'll drop a buck on you. Narcissists don't like to put themselves out for any other human being if they're not going to get anything back. So they're willing to drop a buck on Betty, bring her Skittles, and that's all it takes. Yeah, when you want me to move back in, Betty? How about now? Okay. He, he already knows. He already has everything in boxes. The cure for the last time has left him. Or he has left the cure. He cheated on the cure yet once again for the 20th time. And Betty now is the prisoner for life. This is an aging narcissist with a Mrs. B. It's not sugar-coated. This is the truth. They never move on from relationships. They always want to come back. They always need a warm body. They know most of the people in the harem garage without the knowledge are going to go, yes, come back in. Throw me that Skittles, come back in. But you're here for a reason. You're getting the knowledge. And I'm speaking from experience. If I hadn't got this knowledge, I would have been in this ridiculous cycle as long as she wanted me to. Because I was so trauma bonded. I was so heartbroken that 
I couldn't believe she left this marriage for this person, this complete stranger who, without trying to be too mean, I, I couldn't understand it. I just couldn't understand it. They're not going to be uh, narcissists. They don't, yes, they like good looking people, but it's hard to find uh, good looking people that will go do things for them. They, they're not a 50, 50 type of relationship type of person. Narcissists will get with long tooth Sally long in the tooth, you know, um, they just need that lifer. They, they need that gopher. They need that mommy who they can browbeat and they're celebrated for the browbeating. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Thank you, sir. Another trophy story. Thank you, sir. Another trophy story. Yes. I, let's celebrate all your accolades. Abuse me more. Abuse me more. You're not going to show me any love. Thank you, sir. May I have another? This is, Mrs. B, this is what you waited for to do. And I'm speaking from experience. I, if, if God hadn't intervened, I would have been this pathetic person. Oh, don't go with my arms around her legs. Don't go this time. Because now when they come back, uh, if you're really duped and you have no knowledge, then you're really insecure that they're going to leave and they know it. They know that they, they're just going to look at the door, you know, and they can flirt in front of you. You're out with them and they're staring at every guy that walks by and they're like, they're turning and flirting with guys and they know you can do nothing about it because they, they're a flight risk. And I know this is a pathetic subject to talk about. I don't feel good about talking about this, but narcissists don't have empathy. And it's okay for Mrs. B's uh, to see this behavior. She's hurting inside, but she's not going to show the narcissist because they're that pathetic inside. We would rather have this, this phony love, than to be all alone. And this is the channel that I want to help the Mrs. B's out there go to God and find your worth because he wants you to find who you are. This isn't you. To have your mate flirting with people in front of you, you would rather have that than be alone? Because the right person that God has ordained for you isn't going to dream about doing that. There's no voids in the people that God brings for you. Understand this. And I know I mentioned alcohol in the last video, and I just want to I want to say, look, it's just not narcissists who get drunk and are, that are absolute vile human beings codependents who get drunk you have the code you know when you get buzzed you have that dopamine rush to the brain but then when you over drink you're left with just an intoxicated flesh and all those strongholds that you have in your flesh all the childhood bullying that you went through even codependents but the narcissists and the codependents are absolute monsters when they get drunk because they have their their spirit can't control with the narcissist they don't have a spirit man a, a turned on spirit man i should say there is no leadership for your flesh because usually the flesh controls the, the soul of the narcissist so that's what you have you have a hater you have a hater someone who secretly hates you when they get intoxicated, you see that hatred come out. A lot of times you see someone's true colors. Not every time, but a lot of times you see someone's true colors, what they really think about you when they get drunk. There's no inhibitions. There's nothing stopping them from their flesh just dumping on you and what they really feel about you. Someone who's jealous of you, uh, when you're out and about with friends, someone who gets drunk, you're going to get a tongue lashing for that jealous friend. You think you're all that and blah, blah, blah. You think you, you got that promotion, blah, blah, blah. You'll see that they're not really on your side. And you can't show your 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 fake friends, you, you know, 
something good that happened to you because you can see their face going, mm, yeah, oh, that's, oh, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. This is your friend. I'm so happy for you. You get to see that when, when, when you're successful, you see who really loves the fact that you're successful. But if someone sees that they're measuring themselves to you, you'll see that in when they come around you. And that's the world population. But you, narcissists can't hide this. Narcissists who get intoxicated, it's it, it's the devil. It's it's there's nothing holding the devil back when they're intoxicated. And it's an open door to the demonic realm. Those Mrs. B's who yoke themselves for life to a narcissist, it's not a revolving door to the second heaven. It's an absolute open door to the heaven. They're not doing anything to shut that door. They're cheating on you right and left. They're getting drunk 24-7. They're on drugs or whatever. 24-7, that door remains open. You yoke yourself to the demonic realm for the rest of your life. This is why God is is wanting to pull the narcissist out of your life. He's, he's giving you a chance here to know your value, to know your worth, to close anyone who's opening that door to the demonic realm. Uh, you need to, to pull yourself out. That's why when you're dating somebody, if they don't put God first, I don't care if, they, if they're calling themselves Christians, you got to discern on that fruit because they're going to open doors to, to that demonic realm. And then it's just strife. It's trouble in the flesh. It's absolute 24-7 strife. You have someone who's going to grow to hate you because demons hate you. And they're listening to demon voices when they're opening those doors. And it's not just narcissists. Narcissists are just the embodiment of it. But even carnal Christians open those doors and you'll they start to resent you because demons resent you. You got to keep it sealed around you. You got to find someone who puts God first and means it, who reads the Bible with you. This is why I have this channel to, to show you that he's showing me through my own life and all of my mistakes that I, I made dating. I used to be on the dating sites. I used to just go after uh, the pretty face and that's it. That's all I need. You make me feel good for the moment. And then you yoke yourself to absolute horror. Games. Uh, walking on eggshells every single day. Where you don't want to come home. That pretty face, you stop wanting to come home to after work. Because it's, it's, it's exhausting. And this is the channel that, that forewarns you. If you don't go to the throne and, and allow God to bring you this person, you're going you're gonna to learn the hard way yet once again. I hope I'm helping somebody. I'm going to get to the comments of the day. Don't go away. These comments are the best I've ever seen. Don't go away. Enigma writes, if you're blocked by the narcissist, say thank you and move on. I love that line. Don't tell them thank you. Don't try to get to them and say thank you because you're blocked. But that's the mentality that you need. Absolutely. Angela writes, it hurts because we invested in the relationship without investing in ourselves first. Getting the education here and keeping it real before God, we begin to understand and, uh, and know our worth. If they block us, see it as a blessing, a time to heal. And if and when they come back to unblock, we will no longer be available or vulnerable to them. This is such a great take. We will have grown through our pain, stronger and wiser with battle scars, but washed clean, made a new creation in Christ Jesus. Racker. Angela, thank you, Dave. Your channel is a blessing to us all. You are much appreciated so much. Thank you so much for that. Tempe writes, I had to get rid of a lot of people who always wanted to tell me about the narcissist after the discard. Hey, I saw the narcissist. I saw the narcissist. I saw the narcissist. So many people want to bring you 
news in general, cutting edge news, and they think you want to know what the narcissist is up to, and you don't even want to hear that. And so sometimes you got to allow God to pull certain individuals out of your life who you think and know want you to get this this scabbed, ripped open because they just, they know it's going to devastate you. I come as a light, but they're really wolves in sheep's clothing. Yeah, I saw them hand in hand. Oh, yeah, they were making out. And they're just, your friend is looking at you just, why? Go away. Go away. 30 years later, when it comes to mind, it still leaves me with tinge of sadness that that was the only way to escape the narcissist. Stephen writes, Dave, that's it. You're offending my flesh, but my spirit loves you. <laughs> for all the flesh out there, sorry for the offense, but your spirit man is rejoicing with the truth. It's such a profound statement. This is gold, brother. Forever grateful for your humility and wisdom. Only the wisdom of the Holy Ghost, guys. The wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And I had to get this wisdom. Mick writes, I had a breakthrough today. I finally found the source of my vulnerability to the narcissist. Shortly after we met, I noticed scars on her forehead. She told me that she had craniosynostosis as a baby. And it was such a serious case that she had multiple skull surgeries. At that moment, a voice in my head told me that I shouldn't reject her because she might have brain damage from multiple skull surgeries. I now call that voice codependent. It tries to guilt me into settling for less from others. The same voice convinced me to ignore her selfish behaviors. Yeah. The devil loves codependencies because codependency uh, will, will throw judgment out the window. That's what codependency does. Uh, it's not a self-protection. It's pour more fuel over me and light me on fire. That's what codependents uh, do with yoking themselves to narcissists. Can't you get that fire hotter? Oh, I don't want to see you in pain because I hate myself. We don't think we're worthy. So we're like, yeah, inflict that pain on me. The same voice convinced me to ignore her selfish behaviors. Do I know for sure that the surgeries caused the narcissism? No. But I do know that I will never let that demon voice guilt me into thinking that I don't have the right to use my discernment when I see a red flag, any red flag. Such a great take. ST writes, I gave her a fair guy the opportunity to know the truth that she was married and no, we were not separated. Yeah, I already know the outcome of this. He ignored it. He better not complain when my wife ditches him. You know, we like to think that we're on the side of the new supply because anything at, at the point of, of injury is better than seeing the narcissist uh, uh, victorious in their double secret life that's killing us, that's destroying us. But you don't give a hoot about the new supply. You just want to throw a wrench into their plans. That's all this is because I'm speaking from experience. Oh, I don't want this to happen to him. Baloney. And you're getting the gist of what the devil does. The devil sends like-minded individuals to yoke together. Jezebel spirits who know you're married. So you can't, I say pray for your enemies because we're supposed to pray for your enemies, but we're not going to help our enemies feel better. It's not how it works, guys. If if they knew you were married and they're still going along with this, this evil plan, they deserve each other. Don't try to help the new supply because it's not coming from your heart. That's coming from your flesh. You don't give two you-know-whats about the new supply. It is exactly what I have lived for the last year. Amen. Alexis, thank you for that comment. If you're blocked by the narcissist, count your blessings, but trust me from experience, they do, in fact, unblock you from time to time to do secret hoovers and eventually the big hoover. Yeah, their circumstances, guys, they unblock when they get mad at the new supply. They're kids. 
y'all are thinking that they're having a happy life. Your life was not happy. The best it was with the narcissist, it was empty. Think about it. You're going, something's off. I, I, I don't feel bonded to this person. Well, the new supply doesn't feel bonded to the narcissist. And the new supply is going to offend the narcissist. This is when they unblock you. Hey, what you doing? It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Do not reply to any messages after the discard so that you can stay out of the narcissist toxic cycle. Such good comments. Nevin writes, thank you, Dave. I've been watching since 2022 and I love what you are doing for us. I love you, brother. I love you. Thank you so much. Robert writes, brother, you had me laughing when you said I shouldn't have poured that last drink for them. They cannot keep the mask on at a certain level of intoxication. <laughs> the deval gets real, real with an intoxicated narcissist. Again, anyone with thorns and thistles in their flesh, they're going to show those when your soul can't talk for your flesh. It's just your intoxicated flesh. Hate, 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 hate. And narcissists who can't hold their liquor are absolutely monsters. And you're like, oh, you do not get more than two beers. Because you turn into absolutely Jack the Ripper. <laughs> Bessalini writes, Dave, you are hilarious. An awesome teacher with such patience. This is truly your calling from Abba. A picture of bad things happen for a reason. I thank God for you and sorry, but I also thank him for your pain and suffering with the narcissist. We all have our walk and our purpose. God's using my uh my walk and my lack of coming to the throne to help you go to the throne so that didn't offend me that blessed me i love that comment california boy writes thank you dave you know the power of god your videos have truly helped me get closer with the holy spirit like no one else could i love these comments today Shell writes, I did not react to the blocking from the narc after the first discard. I was unblocked about five weeks later. At this time, I didn't realize what I was dealing with. When the second discard came, I was blocked sometime later, even though I was not contacting him. This is how they are. They're like, oh my gosh, this is a Mrs. A. She's on to me. I got to do something detrimental, that, something that she's going to notice. Block. This is a child you're dealing with. They often block to punish you and make themselves feel superior. I'm glad you're getting this information, Cheryl. Especially if you accept the discard and don't contact them. I'm discarded. Yeah, go, 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 go. Thank you for your videos. When you're when you're a Mrs. A though, uh, and you're like, yeah. Whatever, whatever. They're gonna, they're gonna try to have the biggest phoniest life for you to see that they're laughing nonstop on the beach, and they just want you tuning in on a daily basis to that. It's all phony. It's all false. They they hate Mrs. A's. Mrs. A's make them feel less than. Become a Mrs. A. Indifferent whatever don't react to them guys that's mrs a michael writes i was blocked by my second narcissist after about two years of her calling me from jail which i had paid for so she could future fake with me about how she was going to cook breakfast for me every day sounded like cousin emma on sanford and son even future faked right up till the day she had came come to visit me when she got out of jail and even lied to me about being late because she and her friend Susan got out of church. It, it only takes a couple of hours for the narcissist to get out of jail and already start the, the phony secret life. Nothing that they say is real, guys. She wanted Michael waiting in the wings 
Seeing how she was dressed like someone off the Vegas Strip coming from church, huh? How come you smell like vodka? I had had thought I would have asked what faith she belongs to, the Church of the Seventh-day Receivist? That's good, Michael. That's a good take. Dark Meta writes, I realize fully now she really does have the mentality of a four-year-old child. And I refuse to supply, refuse to give the chaos and reconciling phases and giving nothing for triangulation. All the other times I was locked in a pattern. Wow, man, I am still watching. I think of her doing the literal thing you describe. But the pinpoint accuracy shattered the mirror, leaving her exposed. What a great take. Wild Ivy writes, I got a Hoover from one of the narcissists I have known that I saw a couple of times. It's kind of embarrassing, but for the sake of helping others, I will share the text. For context, this has not gone on long and we were not in any kind of established relationship. I was attracted to him and there was good chemistry, but he just disappears. This is a player narcissist. This is a younger narcissist. This, this narcissist will get older and, she, and Wild Ivy then really has to be on guard because he's going to want to miss his B lockdown. But this is, this is an example. This is a, a real text. When are you going to do a drive-by? Question mark. I think you're due. It's time for a stop-by if you're up for it. Do you see the level of delusion, entitlement, grandiosity this guy has? They want supply with no attachments. He just ignores me, contacts me after like a month or more of not hearing from him, me feeling rejected. They just show up again. And because he's in other relationships, he's, he's, this is utopia for a good looking narcissist, uh, but that's all going to change. There is no um, positive message here, but get yourself out because you don't want to be a lifer, Mrs. B, with someone like this. They're always going to try to cheat. They're always going to get in their car. I need to go for a drive. They're always going to try to see what's what's shaking, but they're unsuccessful, and they're going to take that out on Mrs. B and abuse the crap out of her. Dark meta. Again, whoa, my first time being discarded by her, I was actually destroyed as a person. I could not function. I messaged her loving positive things for 30 days straight, thinking she just had severe conflict mentally. If only I could prove love was real, that I could get through to her and her mind was just being distorted. I could not penetrate the matrix though, because it's a broken matrix. And a lot of us go, it was on me. Mrs. B will say, this is, it was my fault. I'm going to fix this. I'm really going to pour my love. I remember the Texas. I texted her every day for a full week saying how much she meant to me. And then she goes to me three days after that. And then she finally got back to me and said, this is a start in the right direction. She said, so she was breadcrumbing me. She was, she was texting this while in the bed of the new supply. And I bought in, just like you bought in, uh, Dark Meta, you bought into this. And this is a narcissist. They don't have empathy of what they're doing. Warm beds, they can be, uh, they can marry the cure and the next night be in a warm bed with a complete stranger and sleep like a baby because they don't have empathy. Their foundation is corrupt. I could see inside while staying tethered to reality. Even then I got lost. She compartmentalizes smaller simulations within mine with hers and is unaware of any of this. This time I disrupted the cycle and I escaped the whole thing. I love these takes today. The Dancing Lee writes, can we talk about how you block and go no contact with the narcissist who then comes to the conclusion that you're the narcissist? He actually showed me one of your videos. I didn't understand, guys, when I started narcology, why I was getting uh, 
thumbs down on on videos every day. I'm like, if if I why do people keep coming back if they hate my videos? Because I realized people were sharing my videos to narcissists. This is who you are. Watch, watch the whole thing. And I would get thumbs down. Now I'm I, I laugh at the thumbs down that I get, but this one is projecting on back on to Lee, as you know. This is all projection. Because you said something to him that hit home base. You said something to him that made him go, ooh, she's on to me. He pushed me to the edge and I finally broke. Had to go no contact nearly 12 weeks ago to protect myself. He apologized profusely. And when I didn't respond, he decided I'm the narcissist. Yeah. I'm sorry. I want you back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you don't respond to that, you're a narcissist. They will project, guys. They know who they are. And so they want to know if you know who they are. And they'll say things that make you buzz and go, oh, my God. You you weren't the man that I thought you were. You portrayed yourself to be someone that you're not. And I was like, I got you. I already had the information when she dropped that line on me. I was like, okay, no, I got you. I got you. I just want him to leave me alone. I am not a narcissist. I'm the child of a narcissist, and I may have displayed those traits when I was young. Don't defend yourself to this narcissist. But I turned myself around and continued to work on healing and improving myself. Meanwhile, he takes zero accountability for all the things he's done and only focuses on me. You're the problem. Uh, isn't it a funny thing that he wants you back? He wants a narcissist back. It's it's not kosher. They project, and you're in a yeah. You are in a projection rut, and you do not, guys. You do not defend yourself to the flying monkeys. You don't defend yourself to the narcissist. You pull yourself out and you block across the board. You don't want to know what the devil has to say about you, Lee, because they're going to project onto you, and it's already bad enough. You're already blaming yourself for the failure of the relationship. Now you. You're in there to see what the devil has to say about you, what the devil thinks about you. And the devil hates us. So block their camp, block the flying monkeys. They're, they're, they're not in your corner. J-Dub writes, I blocked her after the discard smear campaign, false accusations, tried to get me arrested and fired. This is a sociopath. Sociopaths will not stop until you're dead or you're fired, homeless with nothing. And they still are that dog on a bone. A sociopath has that ongoing anger that it never subsides until another target. And this is usually why they stop uh, coming after you because someone else offends them. And now they're devoting all their time on ruining this other person's life. This is a sociopath and it's demonic. Thankfully, those things didn't happen. Unfortunately, I didn't realize I had been used for a baby. Hmm. It sucks that I can be a father to that child, but it is better for us both. This might be the new supply in my situation. Does your name start with H? Because mine used, guys, the new supply because I have my, my, I had a vasectomy. One of the reasons why she did this is to have a baby. It sucks that I can't be a father to that child, but it is better for us both. She'll just drag us through court and damage the child. I'll be here when that baby can finally make its own decisions. Terrible people. Over one year, no contact, and it feels great when it comes to her. Wow. These guys, this community is amazing. These comments help everybody. I even read these comments going, wow. We're constantly learning. We're learning every single day. And it just makes you kind of like that much sharper. It makes you shake your head going, oh my gosh, they all play out of the same playbook. If they want something like a baby, they're going to go get it with another person. Yes, it happens to me now. I can't eat so much. And you helped me so much with this video. I feel like God told you to do those videos uh, this video tonight. I didn't react on the blocking, but I'm shocked how cold-hearted he is. He has no empathy. 
the abuse and stalking, the cruelty he put me through from day one, almost, I don't know why, but now when I know about this monster, I feel scared of him too. Look, even though they discarded you at one time, now they become stalkers. They, they are addicted to fuel sources and they know all your buttons. They know your patterns. They know your work schedule. It's really, we're dealing with empty meat suits here. And you go from hunting them, like where, where did you go from them hunting you back? And they don't want you to get a new life because their plans fell through. When their plans fall through, uh, you're going to see really, you already saw the monster in discard, but when they're out of fuel sources and they know that you don't have anyone left, they're going to be on you like a dog on a bone. You got to lock your doors. You got to go to the courts to get restraining orders because these people lack empathy, guys. And it's going to go awry with the new supply. You just have to be ready. And there's so many people like Michael at home, even the jailbird that got out of jail and she's going to be back because she's going to, she's getting older and she's going to need supply. She's going to need a, a daddy. And, and Michael has to be ready. Michael has the knowledge. I know Michael's not going to acquiesce to no Hoover. ACA writes, they always Hoover when they know you're going through something tough, when we're vulnerable. They want us to look at them as our savior or something. I've gotten two Hoover attempts in the last two years. We've been divorced for six years at the end of this month, and I've had zero contact for the last five of those years. It's so easy for narcissists to get that cheap side supply from their past spouse. It's, it's ugly. It's no strings attached. It's loveless. And it's just, uh, it, it's playing on Mrs. B's loneliness. And you have to, don't let your past spouse who cheated on you, who had a double life, come back and bring you uh, uh, STDs. I don't think he'll even get over the fact that I don't want anything to do with him anymore. <laughs> Dirty old dusty weirdo. Bess writes, I often watch her upload twice, thrice, four times, and squeaky garbage is so funny. Each time, you know God has healed you when you can laugh at being a squeaky garbage. <laughs> Edit, I got the good old Hoover today. Stay strong, Bess. And I say this with all due respect because the discardees, I was a discardee. We're as good as garbage in the garbage can. And when we're squeaking going, hey, remember me? They're with someone that they think is the cure. They're looking back at the garbage going, why is this garbage piece of garbage talking and trying to ruin what I got? This is a narcissist. Kind heart writes, what about a drinker who's always cranky when they're sober, but who's happy when they're drunk? Is that their true self, the happy? No, that's... That's just dopamine to the brain. That's not their true self. And a lot of alcoholics can actually handle their alcohol. But when they're sober, they're, they're, their flesh is toxic. They have nothing good to say. They don't want to talk. They don't want to celebrate life with you. They don't want to celebrate who you are until what? Until they have that dopamine to the brain again. Don't let time trick you. I had an attempted Hoover after 13 months. He is blocked, so no contact happened. They seem to have a sixth sense of when you're down. Grateful I have knowledge and healing, but it set me back into rumination. I think even though I didn't respond, he gets supplied just dialing the number. Guys, and thank you for these amazing comments. Your loneliness is for a season. Um, it's time that you not blame yourself because they need people to blame. They need people to hold the bag of blame. So when they come back, they can say, hey, you want me to take that blame from you? That burden off your shoulders? This is a, a tool from the devil. And Mrs. B's fall into this perfectly. There's a lot of people right now that you can say if the narcissist um, reached out to you, you would meet them for a drink. 
this this hey you're due for a drive by you would go and entertain that because you're lonely and you're not going to the throne i was lonely um i was blaming myself i wanted the narcissist back uh because i wanted my own thorns and thistles to be relieved i, I felt like i was unlovable and i felt like she was my project and i could have done better in so many demonic voices are talking to us until we go to the throne and God saying, no, I love you. And you're going to start loving yourself. She abused you. He abused you out there, gals at home. And guys, she abused you mentally. And they play upon those strongholds in us. But if you go to the throne and let God in, listen to me out there, let your creator in. He's going to set you free of all these strongholds. And for the first time in your life, you're gonna understand your worth. And that's what he wants, because he loves you there. I'm not just saying this, I'm speaking this from experience. He loves you more than you love yourself. And he's gonna show you value. He's gonna put all the value back into you. And you're gonna to go to his throne, you're gonna to get to know him, and then he's gonna bring you somebody special. He is. Trust me on that. You guys be blessed, and we'll see you tomorrow the next day. Be blessed, guys. Be blessed.